Welcome to Sagittarius season. This really is an opportunity for us to really think about our belief system and what is it that moves us and motivates us? What do we stand for? What are our beliefs and are they in alignment with where we want to go? And just now, literally made Chris pull out the microphone. I'm like, podcast, let's go. Because I had a girlfriend impromptu call me and bring up a conversation around business and pricing and all of that. But what really was at the deeper root of our conversation was, of course, the abundance mindset. And she was talking about making really big financial investments in her business. She's about to host her retreat, just a lot of things going on. And I had this like flash of insight come through that I just had to share with her. And we both sat in like awe of, wow, that was deep. And so I thought we need to share this on the podcast. Hey, we're Britt and Chris Carmichael, and you're listening to the Elevated Life Podcast. Throughout the 16 years we've been together, we've never ceased in our endless quest to better ourselves. We've studied top experts, philosophers, and gurus. After years of personal self-experimentation and working with thousands of clients, we've found the tools for shifting your beliefs, moving through fears, and developing a positive mindset that aligns with your authenticity, integrity, and soul purpose, regardless of your past. If you're ready for a breakthrough, then you're in the right place because we're here to empower you to take control of your life with simple mindset shifts that create radical transformation. We'll be diving into topics like personal growth, health, philosophy, spirituality, relationships, success, and mindfulness. We don't shy away from the taboo topics like sex, hypnosis, meditation, and exploring altered states of consciousness. So create some space for yourself and get comfy. It's time to become the badass you were born to be. So this idea of this wave coming in and going out, right? Get this visual, waves coming in. And when we were in Bali, the craziest thing happened. At our hotel, the beach that we were staying on, the tide would go so far in and out it would go a mile. And so when the tide was out, all the villagers would come and grab different th- trinkets and crabs and all kinds of stuff. Like that was their way of like actually gaining capital for their business, you know, in business. And then when the water would come back in, all the people from the resort would go sit on the beach and then they would sell all those trinkets or whatever the case. You get the idea, right? But this tide going in and tide going out. So I wanted to just remind you that it's not just a tide that's like quick, you know, wave after wave that we're used to. Sometimes those tides can take time. And so this idea of this wave came to mind. And I, I said to her, what if all of the investments that we've been making in our business. And she talked about, you know, people not spending money like they used to. And I said, I do see that. But what if all of these investments that we're making in ourselves and our business, what if this was like the tide going out, like all of this energy going out? And what if 2024 brought to you this tidal wave of abundance? What would your attitude be like today? Because what if our abundance was judged on our attitude of how we operate in those tight times or those down times or those times where things are shifting and changing and you have to operate out of fear and not no out of faith and not fear hello I'm dyslexic hello I'm Brittany nice to meet you or a knee Brit <laughs> you know you know what's amazing is that we are as human beings we are pattern recognition animals we always can decipher the patterns but what's crazy is that we a lot of times miss the cycles that are happening in our own lives. And I think a lot of times it's because we don't pull back enough to see things in bigger chunks of time. But I mean, women have moon cycles, the moon has its cycle, we've got seasons, we've got all these things that are constantly happening in cycles. And one of the things that happens is monetarily things change. You know, sometimes we're we're riding this, like Britt mentioned, this huge wave, you know, and everything's just going straight up. And sometimes there are, you know, the, the wave comes back down. And so if you can find your balance point during any kind of cycle, if you can say, I'm good right here, I feel extremely centered, you can allow yourself to love when it's low and also love when it's high, to be able to take advantage of both. Because if you run your life the same way all the time, if you're living the same day over over and over again, what you're missing is taking advantage of the seasons. That's why I like right now because in Texas, it's starting to finally get cold. It's finally cooling off. It, you know, you're not feeling cooked every time you walk outside, but it's forced change. That's why I love so much about seasons, forced change, because we have to adapt to it. Oh, the 
the, I was going to say the lights going out so early. <laughs> yeah, you have to. You're forced to. Nature is forcing you like this change is going to happen. Every, every woman every month, for the most part, figures out that change is going to happen for this. And if we can look at those changes, if we can start to understand them and start to change our attitudes, if we can start thinking about what do I need to be, what do I need to be doing differently inside my head so that I can always be taking advantage of the opportunities around me. Like you said, when the water went out, people were out there taking advantage of it. They were thinking, oh my gosh, this is my chance. It, it's now down in this low rest period. Things have moved away. I can, I can get it. And then same way, back, back when that water moved back in, everyone was taking advantage again. But if you never did that, if you just sat and watched it the whole time, or if you're just concentrating on doing the same thing you always do, you missed it. You missed all those opportunities. It's the cycles. It's the seasons. It's the changing our patterns of thinking that really allow us to bob with the ebb and flow because the world's going to move no matter what we think or do. It reminds me so much of the Wheel of Fortune card in the tarot, the 10th card of the Major Arcana. This is that moment of sometimes the tides are in and sometimes they're out. You're at the top of life, that top of the wheel of life where it's good luck, it's good karma, everything's flowing and going your way, synchronicities, like every, you just feel like on top of the world. But that wheel all often and always turns. It doesn't stop. You're not just always on top of your game and on top of the world. It's going to go through that season of like going back under and things are a little bit slower. You don't, that you can't see the forest through the trees or whatever the hell that saying is. It's a time where you have to learn to cultivate gratitude to know that what my mom always taught me, this too shall pass, which we have <laughs> framed on the wall of our art gallery because it's a great reminder that when things are good, this too Two shall pass. So, you know, don't hold on to it and think that this is going to be how it's going to be forever. It's going to change. And that doesn't mean it's going to get bad. It doesn't mean that you're going to have a bad time. It just means that it's not going to feel the exact same of like, this is amazing. Oh my God, it's all great. Like you're going to go through seasons of grief and loss and change or physical ailments or what so many life period, but it is promised that it won't always stay the same. That's why this conversation is so important, specifically this time of year, because it's that gratitude you mentioned. It's can you still have the faith when when it looks bleak? Can you still think of, you know what, I'm still in the game. I'm still doing this. I, maybe I need to pull back a little bit. Maybe I need to be a little introspective. Maybe I need to work on my skill set. Maybe I need to appreciate the people that are around me. Maybe I need to think about all the gifts I already have in my life. Maybe I need to start putting that at the forefront of my mind, just what I don't have. You know, stop concentrating on just what there's, there's a lack part. There's a part that I need to go get before I become happy. All that's bullshit. It's all so many of the things that we already have are inside of us. We just have to realize that there are things that we want. The human mind loves to desire things. We get so caught up in the fantasy of our life changing. And what we do is we build out this future with this new thing that we want to go get. And then suddenly we've got it all. And that's never going to be the case. The case is that you already have it, but can you appreciate it? And so thinking about this, right as we come into this whole Thanksgiving season, right as we hopefully get to spend time with some of the people that we love, it's what really matters in life. Like, what's that thing? If you knew that you only had about a year left, what would be those things that suddenly matter to you that you're not currently putting in your life? Because I love during this season, especially as it's, it's darker early, especially as we're doing a little bit, our schedules change. We're, we're not out as late. It's just... I start to wonder, what have I been neglecting? Like, is it my friends? Am I not telling the people that I care about that I love them? Am I forgetting to do that? Am I caught up too much in the business side of things? Am I caught up too much in serving other people, maybe just my clients, and I haven't done things for me lately? It's just kind of getting that, where have I been neglecting? And then letting that start saying, okay, well, how do I add that into my routine? What am I going to do differently on not just a daily basis, but what am I going to do differently weekly? What is that one thing I'm going to do every week? Am I going to tell my friends, hey, I've been thinking about you. You guys want to get together soon? I'd love to see you again. Love to hear about what's been going on in your life. It, you have to start pulling that out and thinking, if I've been lacking this, how is that reflecting on what other people think about me? Because when other people think certain things, the amount of opportunities that you get in your life either goes up or goes down. If you're well-liked by people, doors open every single place you go. If people don't like you or feel like you've been neglecting them or they're just, you're not vibing, those doors immediately close. This whole goes back to that idea of your net worth is your network. It also makes me think of how you feel about yourself. 
when you treat yourself that mom always taught me you teach others how to treat you and that's how you treat yourself how you show up your confidence levels your worth your value your boundaries what you'll tolerate what you won't what you'll speak up for your beliefs all of this right now I think is appropriate for Sagittarius season is essentially our own retrograde a little review before we move into this new calendar year although I don't believe in cycles I follow nature and I don't think you're supposed to reinvent yourself in the midst of winter and just come out in January while it's still cold and and we're talking about northern hemisphere here um, in our winter season I I think it's um it's almost cruel to make people feel like they have to start fresh in January and mid winter season when you're in the process of letting go and being still and allowing those transformations to integrate from all the year. If you look at the cycle of the seasons. So for me, I obviously honor that the calendar year changes, but I don't put so much pressure on myself in January to like be this new person or do all the things. That's why most people's resolutions fail in the first few weeks of the month. Um, We've done plenty of, we've done podcasts on that, like the studies behind that. So I think it's important for you to start reviewing and giving yourself this process of what feels good for me now? What is authentically aligned now? What beliefs do I stand for? And what is my integrity and where are my boundaries? Scorpio season gave us a hell of a run for our money for really rebirthing ourselves. We are going through this process of letting go. It's the death. It's the transformation. And now that we've been letting go of relationships, Libra, that doesn't serve us, All of those things are contributing to opening up space for who we're going to step into in this new year. Um, on the call with my girlfriend. I love that she's like spiritual woo woo because she's like, I am over this seven year. Everyone thinks seven is like seven, seven, seven abundance. It's so great. Spiritual. It is not a freaking spiritual. Sevens in the tarot are fucking challenging. They are not good cards. Like they come with struggles. So this year to me, based on the people I've been coaching, the conversations I've been hearing, this has been a a more challenging year where we're trying to regain our footing after the last, let's say three years of that wake up and shake up of like, who am I? What, what is important to me? This is exactly why I created my authentically aligned goal setting guidebook, because it's the process that we go through to figure out what are those things that are important to us and how can we craft our life around that versus the other way where it's like, I, I, and I know we all have to work, but your work can be something you love. You just have forgotten that you have that choice if you're not um, following that path. Gosh, this, this, you already mentioned so many things. The first is that it's interesting the January the January one thing how everybody tries to reinvent themselves and go hard in the paint. But what I think that we're really looking to do during that time, like how to really take advantage of it, is to begin the prep work. Like we're sitting down talking about this right around Thanksgiving time. Like it's it's starting to go. Okay, what what went well this year? Like what what did we do this year that just knocked it out of the park? Like how, how did we show up? What, what, what could we have done way better on? Like, where do we drop the ball big time? It's starting to have those conversations. It doesn't. Where do we drop the ball? Oh, and being able to deal with grief and try to run everything at the same time. Oh, yeah. When your team is out, too, like your freaking main assistant is like dealing with grief. All So here's the lesson. Don't let all of your you and your teammate, your freaking teammates, animals die at the same time. OK, just maybe maybe if y'all could avoid that, it would be great because it was tough. That was that was a tough season. Launching Shine School, going on retreats, going to coaching summit noodles dying assistance cat dog dying like covid <laughs> like oh my god we, it was a lot for a, a it was like it all built up to this one moment of like what the fuck you know but i think too you know you talk about sevens being not necessarily the most positive oh part yeah your of birthday's it. on the seventh you fuck <laughs> but, but what i but what i love is the fact that and this, this is going to sound weird but i love to watch people struggle a little bit because out of all of those struggles always comes growth and so for me, what I realized, we stacked the calendar. We stacked the calendar at the beginning of the year, knowing that our year this year was going to be extremely busy. I mean, I remember looking at every month and being like, holy smokes, we're, we're doing it. We're going, you know, we're going hard. And we still were able to handle everything. Like, that's what we did well. What sucked was what happened in our life. The you know, uncontrollable. The uncontrollable parts. But what, what you realize, too, well, or at least what I realize is that it's easy for people. I had the awareness that it's easy for people to distract themselves with their work. Because I realized that losing noodles didn't hit until we had actual rest time. time. 
mm-hmm. like moments where we weren't going somewhere or presenting something or, you know. Yeah, he picked the most opportune time where we were speaking at plant-based conference, flying to Utah for Sarai's Balanced Stylist Society retreat, then coming back to uh, what was the na- There was another something in there. There was and another then big we, event. Yeah, and then we left for, oh, Coaching Summit was there. Then we left for Broken Bow. It was like, oh, my gosh, back to back to back. And, and that was the last time we did this type of podcast because we were like, hey, y'all, we're about to go into crazy busy season. Come join us at these retreats. This is where we'll be and we'll see you on the other side. And here we are on the other side. I keep telling Chris, like, we need to sit down and record like a solo pod, well, duo podcast, if you will, rather than an interview, which I've been loving the interviews. So if you've been loving the interviews, like send us a DM, let us know what's been your favorite, what really lands, because we've realize that these conversations have led to incredible connections and learning about the amazing work it's giving me hope that there are amazing people in the world doing elevated shit you know um so i I digress because i just popped in to kind of share like how that is showing up that's also something that i learned and anyone who's who's been introverted or classifies himself as an introvert that doesn't mean that you have a crappy uh, friends it doesn't mean that you don't you can't go out and socialize with people if that's if you're not good socially that's a skill you have to get being introverted just means like for me i i prefer for the most part time alone or t- our time with Brit. like that's that to me gives me the most value but i love i've gotten over the last year or two to where i love being around people it's you married a libra you're going to have to be social <laughs> and, and i cannot tell you how much more that's brought to my life. I mean, we've met some people over the past maybe three or four years that, I mean, have just blown me away. You know, the podcast and interviewing people has been a big part of that. You know, it's great to to be able to reach reach out and, and really connect with people. And, and, you know, you can connect immediately when you, when you care about people. And it's so interesting what happens because we had a, a big downtime, you know, going through grief is, is, is extremely difficult. And I realized that had we not built those relationships, there wouldn't have been the support. And it's that support, I feel like, that gets us through those times, you know, because sometimes it's not enough just to be you. Sometimes you need the help of other people, other people caring about you, other people loving you. And and we had that. Yeah. It, shout out to everyone who's been there for us, um, like just in life in general, but specifically over the last year or two. Uh, Anna, our podcast assistant, is coming to mind because I know she has to sit and listen to us talk <laughs> like hours and hours upon end. So big shout out to you, sis, and literally everyone that's been there to support us like the kind words while noodles pass just f- everything it's just been so grateful I-, I feel so grateful and I think this is the season it's not like do you go back and eat turkey with your shitty family I think it's just really get back to the se- if we're gonna play if we're gonna play pretend of these fucking holidays let's play pretend and actually embody the quality that was it was founded on and that's appreciation and thankfulness and gratitude and going back to attitude my mom used to beat me with paint stir sticks duct taped together and she wrote attitude adjuster on it now i get it now but damn girl she had to like beat me beat that idea into me so let me not beat you with paint stir sticks like my mom did mama was wise but she was a scorpio okay or she's a scorpio she cray so we had to like find the wisdom in all of the chaos but I love her to love her to bits, but let this be your attitude adjuster, a simple reminder that all you have to do to completely transform your life is just adopt this attitude of gratitude instead of playing the victim mode and looking at the glass half empty choose to see the good in all choose to find a positive perspective and offer appreciation for what is working so if you have ten dollars in your bank account love the hell out of it to because to appreciate means to make more of rather than i only have ten dollars i'm so poor i'm so broke because you're going to perpetuate that belief system and in the sagittarius span of time this is where we're rooting our belief system so if you don't want to carry that lack mentality or that victim mentality, or anything like just, I'm not good enough, I'm not cool enough, I'm not smart enough, who am I to serve, or like do these cool things in the world, whatever that belief system that you've been operating from that's been a little shaky because it doesn't feel aligned, you're stepping into a more empowered version of yourself, allow yourself to grieve and let go of that old version of you and really set in stone like, this is the new me that is confident, that is empowered, that has these boundaries, that is filled with love and creativity, like give yourself permission to let go of that old version while still honoring with gratitude of all those hard lessons that serve to get you to this moment. 
Oh, it's, just, it's, it's so true. And, you know, th- thinking back on the talking about the network, if you are, are feeling lack, if you're feeling low in life or feeling like the world's bad and things like that, you've got to go back to your network. We have been around people, you know, a lot of people talking about the economy right now. The economy's down, the economy's this, prices are up, all this kind of stuff. If you constantly listen to that and then go feel that way in your business, and then that's how you talk to your spouse, that's how you talk to your kids, that's how you internalize things. You're going to prove yourself right. There's going to be a lack. And I'm not saying that it hasn't affected a lot of industries. I'm not saying, I'm not talking about what's true because sometimes what's true doesn't always matter. We're looking for what is effective. And so... We, this year, especially, again, because of the podcast and stuff, we got around people, high net worth individuals, very high net worth. Like I said, we, we did a lot of networking this year, a lot of meeting new people, a lot of talking, a lot of getting out there, a lot of you know, hit, hit, hitting the ground, you know, hitting the pavement hard and, and just getting out there, wanting to serve people, wanting to listen to people's stories, caring about people. And I'll tell you, if you're not great at networking, if you're not a, a really social person, if you don't shine in that thing, the number one thing you can do, and this Find is what- a Libra. This, <laughs> that will help. <laughs> Britt will literally walk up to anybody. That, that makes it work for her. But I'm always not always next to Britt. You know, when we went to the coaching summit, we split up constantly. You know, yeah, we, every time we chose not to do like groups together because I'm like, I already know your story. I want you to go meet new people. Like we're normally really good at shining as a couple, but you have to be able to shine individually because if you don't, I mean, knock on wood, but something could always happen to Brit. Something will eventually Cancel happen. Cancel that. Will eventually happen to Brit. It's just, a, it's a thing. And you have to be accepting of that reality. And so here's what I recommend that you do. Here's what I do. Here's what I learned how to do when Brit's not standing next to me just shining. Ask questions about the other person. If you're like, well, I don't know what to talk about in a conversation. I always know to talk about them. <laughs> and the second that you talk about them, they know a lot about it. So you're not putting them on the spot, making them feel weird about themselves. I don't ask strange questions. I ask things that will allow them to immediately win. I want to have conversations that they're excited about being into. And suddenly, boom, we're off and running. And it's very low effort stuff that you have to do. But you do have to care. There has to be a real enthusiasm behind it because people will eventually figure out that you're BSing them. I mean, there's we had those detectors somewhere built in. And so ask genuine questions like care about a person. The number Number one thing to networking is caring about the person who you're about to talk to. The second that you start doing that and stop thinking about how you look or what's in your teeth. Or what they can do for you. Like, look, that's that's going to happen sometimes, you know, like that. But keep the main thing, the main thing. It's so important to let other people that they're, let them notice that they're seen. Like, oh, yeah, man, you got up there. I mean, when we go to, to speaking conferences, I walk up to each speaker after they're done if I can get the chance to. And I'm telling them what how much I love their thing. Uh, and if, if they're like, well, do you have any suggestions for how it can improve? Boom, we're having a conversation about that now. Sometimes that'll happen. And sometimes you'll realize that a lot of people are nervous when they share. A lot of people do think about themselves and get worried about what other people are thinking about them or how their shirt looks and all that kind of stuff. And just be like, I wasn't even concentrating on that. You were so good at what you're delivering. I just kept wanting to listen. You start telling people that, building up their confidence and having a relationship with them becomes extremely easy. I'm not just talking about kissing ass. That's not what it is. You want to be giving genuine things each time. But that level of care that you put into, I'm telling you, the doors that open, the the things that you get invited to, the things you get able to do, I mean, that's one of my favorite things. How do you become VIP? And one of the deals is that you have to care about people because it pays off so many dividends. Not only is it fulfilling to you like emotionally, even as a guy, it's very fulfilling. I love to give guys hugs now. That's something that I never, ever, ever did. But I will tell you that men don't get hugged enough. I mean, we'll shake each other's hands, but what, what the hell is that? Like when you actually hug somebody and wrap your arms around them and your hearts are connected, something different happens, especially if you'll allow it to happen. If you always stay on the outside, if you're always on the sideline looking in, you'll never get that love that most of us are just kind of begging to feel. I don't know if you heard it or not, but Chris Carmichael just said he's going to host a men's retreat. Oh boy, here we go. (laughs) I mean, it's just come up time and time again. And I just feel like envisioning the men that came to the evolved couples retreat. If you were to like how we split up on one of the days, I took the girls and you took the men and um, you got to teach on all the, all the semen retention and the manly man stuff. And we'll leave it to <laughs> we'll leave it there. Um, it, it was really cool to see how you guys built like this pact, like this like community. And when we were taking all the couples photos on the beach and um, when we split up and like girls and guys did pictures, it was 
just really cool to see like the bond and the brotherhood that you guys had created so quickly at the Evolved Couples Retreat because the walls were down. They were willing to be hugged. Like I, I remember walking in and like everyone hugging each other. It was like already just that kind of energy. It was really special. That's my favorite thing about retreats. You know, the, the transformations are really beautiful to watch. You know, that's really cool to see someone go from something to something more that they've been looking for or searching for for a long time. But it's that like family connection. Retreats build a family connection because you're kind of in the foxhole with the other person, you know, because some people will have breakthroughs that will bring up, you know, dark spots that were in their lives or or things that they hadn't thought about in a long time and be like, damn, I'm here. I want to work through that because I'm I'm with people that I've begun to know, love and trust. And I've been listening to them and they've been really vulnerable and open. So I think I'm I mean, I don't know how many people say I've never shared that before. Or people said, I haven't admitted this. Hearing someone say, I haven't admitted is so powerful because what that just says is that they trusted you in that moment. That what The only reason people don't admit things is because someone will judge them, blame them, leave them. They'll be ostracized. Like we keep so much our, our hearts, our, our cards so close to our heart because we're so worried what people might think or do. And in a space like that, it's like, we're, I mean, we're here for this, like this, the, the experience that you're going through and the transformation that is about to happen is the main reason why we're here. And it builds such a family bond. Like that's, that's one, again, it's people like the, the, the value in life in so many ways besides your own personal development and, and becoming kind of what, what version, the confident version, the kind of version that you, you would really like to see yourself as, It's people besides that. I mean, it's the people that bring so much value. They can be so draining. I know it. People can be such a pain in the ass at the same time. But those conversations, when you find the right people, when you find your tribe, your group, the people who really jive with you are interested in the same kind of topics. And it it doesn't have to be exactly the same as you because you want to be able to ping and pong with people with differences of opinion. But it's just so nice to be around a space where people respect each other because you can make really bold moves quickly because you have a support system that's very different. You know, when I think about the chakra system and that's what we work through at the goddess retreat and healing that that first level at root chakra is your relationships and connection to community to money to support to feeling safe in your environment and so that's a big that's the foundation of which your enlightenment builds your understanding your capacity to hold space for creativity and compassion and like visionary ideas all of that is built upon that feeling safe and secure so building a, a community is the essentially one of the most important things and when we went to Brendan Bruchard's um, High Performance Academy uh, we learned that the number one reason why people are living to the oldest ages and longevity is because of their relationships and connections to people and for me although we were there for high performance coaching and we learned all kinds of great things which most of the things we were doing it was the community piece that was really missing like you and I created a little island You know, like it's just me and Chris, Team Carmichael. And over the last, you know, decade going to CrossFit, we made conscious choices to put ourselves in community of people who like to work out. CrossFit was that thing where we broke out of our like little cocoon and we're like, okay, let's insert ourselves into a community that is of like mind. And that did lead to a ton of opportunities and experiences and new relationships that are still in our lives to this day. Yeah, you 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 bring up a couple of really important things, and and one of the first ones talking about talking about CrossFit or any kind of like working out. And we did that for a year. And it, I mean, it was, was profound. It. Yeah, it was one year. It wasn't like we did it for the last ten years. Okay, okay, even more important. <laughs> There's almost always something happening or going on in all of your communities. So we didn't just show up to CrossFit so that we could work out. I would come up. I would come early. I would stay late. I may just stay late just to talk to people. I may stay late so that I can help the next class load barbells, pull the pull up bands down, like do mobility workouts, you know, once a week with them. I might show up on a Saturday. If they had an event, somebody had a birthday, I was going to that too. I mean, we went to all of that. Yeah, we, we, did. we got invited to a, a surprise birthday party and we were like, what? Really? Okay. And that just unlocked the door of like, let's show up. Let's put ourselves out there and just see what's what. Because I hear so many people that don't have big... Um, 
networks or who, who aren't really good at the social game, they're like, oh, you know, there's just nothing really going on. And that's not true. There's literally always something going on everywhere. I mean, there's some kind of club you can join. And if you don't have one local, there's one online. Like just being around people is what's really going to make the difference. And we, I mean, we milk it. I mean, we, we do as much as we can, as often as we can. And it can be just in short bursts. Like these weren't, we're not going all out. It's not partying all night. We're staying out till two and you're coming back and we can't do the next day. It's not like that. It's not going out and being drained. It's not just constantly giving of yourself. That's not what I'm talking about. It's just little short bursts. Maybe we're only there for 45 minutes, but for those 45 minutes, we go in, we make a big, present. We make a big impact. We're not holding on to our phones. We never complain. You do not walk into a room full of people and complain unless you're on fire or something like it's that. It's like, like you're on mission to like discover everyone's passions. Like who, like what can I learn from everyone here? Like how can we exchange like a, a beautiful, intimate conversation versus like when we walked into this uh, event this week, it was interesting because it's like everyone's like in their own little groups or pockets and they don't really want to break out. They only want to talk to the people they know. And for me, I'm like, oh my God, this old lady has pink hair. I'm going to go talk. I don't know. Who are you? Like, what's your name? And that unfolded a long conversation to get to know her and her husband. And, you know, it was just, it's interesting to witness like how people go into these groups to be social, yet they don't socialize. And back to it again, you pointed out something asking her a question or like, tell me about your pink hair. Like, listen, if you, if you, That was the whole reason why I committed to like, I had pink hair when I was 19 years old. And at 20, I started working in a salon in downtown Dallas in the like deep LM artsy fartsy district. And when this older lady in her 60s came in with all gray hair, got her hair highlighted, I'm like, what the hell are they doing over there? I don't know anything about gray hair. They pull out the foils, they wash her hair and she sits down and she's got pink and purple highlights in her hair. And I, I walked, I marched my little happy ass over to her and I said, what do you do? She said, I own an art gallery. And I told her, I vow today to commit to being myself and as awesome as you are my whole life. Like, I'm like, what the hell? It was just so cool to see someone like that with pink hair. So when that lady walked into the party, definitely in her 60s with her freaking turquoise necklace crystal on and her pink and purple hair, it just instantly took me back to my 20s when I made that commitment. Like, I'm going to commit to be me, to be authentic and not to be afraid to be seen. And so when she walked in the door, you better believe that's the first person I'm going to talk to. And y'all know what? Her birthday was the day before mine. She's another Libra. We just, it was like a beacon. I could tell. <laughs> you, you're you tapping into one of the most important things to know when it comes to just life in general. <laughs> Let a Libra do your hair. <laughs> <laughs> that is, you have two options as you want to grow. And that is you're either going to be somebody or you're going to know somebody. Those are the two real pathways. And the way that you be somebody, like Britt said, pink hair. So Britt's going to get noticed in a room, right? You can either be extremely skillful. You could be attractive. You could be great with your words. There's so many different ways. All those are almost all skill-based, right? That's, that's something that you add on to yourself or maybe just magnify a portion of your personality. That's how you be somebody. And that network that we were talking about earlier, that's how you know somebody. It's great if you can do both, but if you want to leapfrog in your life, either be somebody or know somebody and be thinking about what kind of actions you can be taking or what kind of extra skills you can be gaining to do either one of those. It can be a a really big skill that you go out and learn, that you acquire, and because of that skill set, people automatically like you. I mean, maybe you're you're a surgeon. I mean, you know, it's, it's just something that you've had to go out and grab. To know somebody, you're going to go have to do out and magnify what their strengths are. It's so important to realize that if you can do either one of those well at all, life is way easier, at least in, in terms of opening doors for you, getting you in the door, getting you a seat at the table. If you know somebody, it's just as easy because you piggyback off of them in a lot of ways. So are you going to support people, help and support people and build their strengths up? Are you going to be a person who puts a lot of the uh, eggs into your basket of I'm going to build up my strength? Doing both is really the quality that you want to be developing yourself over this next year. If you have not put a lot of emphasis on what your network is doing, if you have not put a lot of emphasis on what your internal values are, how you can bring those to the world in a way that maybe they pay you for, maybe they appreciate you for, maybe you build a legacy with. So two really important questions to be asking yourself. How can you increase that network so that you know somebody? And how can you increase what those skills are that you have so that you can be somebody? It's just something, how we affect the world, how we communicate with them, how we show up matters so much into how not only we feel, but they feel as well. 
Whew, goodness. I just, I feel good. I, it's been so fun just getting to share and be candid today. And here's something fun that you might not know, or maybe you noticed Chris and I have always sat like side by side to record these podcasts for the last three years. But today we're trying something different. I found a whole new setting on the mic and we're sitting across from each other. And I've just really enjoyed getting to look at you and like, look into your eyes and like have a like conversation rather than staring at my shoes, you know, it's, it's not normally how we do it. Even when we go on walks, we don't normally just stare at, each, at each other. Each it's other. Different. Yeah. We all, we're always looking forward in the same direction. So this has been, this has been fun for me, Carmichael. Thank you very much for presenting your beautiful face. <laughs> so if you enjoyed this, let us know by DMing us at the Elevated Life Club. And if you want more of this, come join us inside our monthly co group coaching membership, theelevatedlifeclub.com, where we teach you simple mindset shifts that create radical transformation in your life. So if you love this, then you are not going to want to miss joining us and starting off 2024 right. We're so excited to be joining you this month and talking all about fulfillment. I think fulfillment is ultimately what we're looking for at the end of that success ladder. Yeah, it's not always the happiness. It's not always the money. Because if you've missed the fulfillment portion of it, all's for naught. You've really climbed up in a ladder that just has another ladder at the end of it. When you hit fulfillment, you can add all the other things on that you want. But without that base foundation of, oh my gosh, this feels so good inside. I just love waking up feeling this way. Everything else feels cheap. And you know what's beautiful about fulfillment? The real truth is you can choose that now with the right perspective. Not I have to have X amount of dollars in the bank or X amount of followers or X amount of influence or whatever the case it is that you're searching for. You can choose that right now. And we're going to show you how to do that inside the next masterclass in the Elevated Life Club. So come join us. We look forward to serving you and seeing what 2024 has in store. We've got lots of kick ass interviews coming out. Freaking Natalia Benson just laid it down her spiritual journey and astrology. That one's I, I'm pumped for that one. I'm ready to go listen to that one. And we have so much more in store for you. We cannot wait to support you. It looks like we've got a men's retreat coming up. And after seeing a Volvin license plate on that car yesterday, I'm thinking it's time we book the Evolved Couples Retreat. So let us know what you're most excited to see from us in 2024. And if you have any topics you want us to cover, or if you'd like to be interviewed to share your wisdom, your passion, and your magic, come reach out and start a conversation. And until then, we'll catch you next time. Peace. Peace. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Elevated Life Podcast. If you love this episode, please share that love by leaving us a five-star review and spreading the good vibes on social. You can tag us at The Elevated Life Club. Want more wisdom from us? Become an elevator by joining us inside our monthly membership club at TheElevatedLifeClub.com to discover mindset upgrades, lifestyle hacks, and spiritual tools to elevate your soul. Each month features a live group coaching masterclass, guided meditations, yoga practice, and more to help you transform your life one step at a time. It has all the tools, coaching, and community you need to level up, progress every month, and keep going in every area of your life consistently over the long term. Join us in the club and start your transformation today by signing up at TheElevatedLifeClub.com.